this year, science is going to have a part of it that might include a little fiction. Something about Star Trek appeals to me because they actually consulted real scientists to make their shows. It started in the 1960s, I think it was 1966 when the first episode came out, and a lot of the space exploration and warp speed is actually based on real physics. But physics that either may never happen or doesn't happen just yet. So this year, we're going to have kind of a Star Trek theme to our class. And this class, here's how I think of it. Um, our classroom is like a ship of the mind. When we come in here, we learn things that aren't necessarily of this room. They're out there in the world. Now, sometimes we get to go out in the world, like Sisyphus and water quality. Sometimes we have to go out with our imagination. And that imagination I am calling the voyages of the Starship Equinox. Now, the Starship Equinox in the Star Trek world is an actual ship. It's a ship, and it looks like this. It's a gorgeous ship, and it's a science vessel. So I chose this as our ship because we're a science class, and this is a science vessel. Now, as you know, when you do the 3D Game Lab quests, you get experience points, and you level up. Many of you are already level two, meaning you are a science student. By the time you reach level three, you're going to be a Starfleet crewman. A Starfleet crewman is the first rank in this Starfleet adventure we're taking this year. So this is the insignia of Starfleet Academy. Our class is kind of like Starfleet Academy. This is also Starfleet Academy Command. I am wearing Command colors from the original Star Trek. In the next generation, they use red for Command colors and a very different looking uniform. So that's why I'm dressed like this today. Um, so you are now in Starfleet. All right, this is the United Federation of Planets and Starfleet Command. Now, this is the science fiction part. This has never existed because Star Trek takes place in the 20, in the 23rd century. Well, we're, what century are we in? 21st. We're in the 21st, so this can't happen yet because we're not there yet. So here's another picture of our lovely starship. And these are going to be our voyages. So let me show you a little something here. Some of you might recognize this. <coughs> These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life, new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. So this one is the famous one. In most of the Star Trek, uh, the movies, and the Next Generation, and the original Star Trek, the voyages took place in the Enterprise. Our voyages will take place in the Equinox. Now the Enterprise, this one, is from the 24th century. Uh, it's a galaxy-class starship. This one can hold a crew of about 1,070 people. Okay? Ours is a much smaller ship. Ours can hold a crew of 80 people. And it's great because there are 79 sixth graders and me. Ha! I love it. So, it, that kind of works out perfectly when you look at it. So, these are not built to scale. If these were built to scale, our ship would be about this big compared to the um, Enterprise. Now, the original Enterprise was, was much smaller. So, this one got very big. And they call it a galaxy class starship. Ours is a Nova class starship. This one's also from the 24th century. So we've got a couple of ships here, and ours will be the voyages of the Equinox. Not the Enterprise. Not for us. Every now and then, the story will continue. It won't be every day, 
But if you notice, sometimes you'll see things around the room that tell you we get to find out what happens next in our story. It'll be in the form of an incoming transmission. It'll be to Captain A. Gonzalez, that is Moi, and to the USS Equinox, and this is our designation from Starfleet Command. We get our missions from Starfleet Command. Now, who knows what that is? Oh. Have you seen those? It's interesting that they on like everything you write in the story. You see them all over the place now. Well, these are called QR codes. And if you have a smartphone, later on, oh, you see, oh, look, you'll find them around the room. You might see one next to Iron Man over there. You might see one back there next to the word patience. Wherever you see one, whenever we're done with them, I'm going to put them over there. But if you come in one day and there's somewhere else on the room, you're going to have to find out what it says. You can do that on the iPad 2s. Maybe one person at your table will be a communications officer, and they're responsible for figuring out what the QR code says. Or, or you could download a free app called QR Reader. They have it for Android and iOS. What it does is this. So I go, and these are on the iPad 2s. I get my QR reader, and it's going to scan. So what it'll do is it'll use your camera. You have to have a camera. And it has these um, kind of box. If you can put the QR code inside the box, it will take you to some information. So this one, will look like this. Sometimes it's just text telling you what the next part of the story is. Sometimes it'll have pictures um, or video. It depends on what I've created. So here's our dispatch. Calling USS Equinox, Starfleet Science Vessel, to the Taurus Breach, to Starbase 47. Captain Gonzalez, report to Admiral Reyes. Now if you know anything about Star Trek uh, ranks, Admiral outranks the captain. So for example, if each of the teachers is the captain of their own classroom, who would be our Admiral? Mr. Prince. Right on. Mr. Prince, because he's in charge of all the whole school. And then who would be a rank above him? The person who owns the school board. The school board. And along with um, Rich Stewart, who is our superintendent, they would be, now the school board is more like um, the, the Federation of Planets. They're like the president, whereas the superintendent is like the rear admiral. Rear admiral is in charge of a whole bunch of admirals. An admiral is in charge of a whole bunch of captains. A captain is in charge of a whole bunch of officers. <clears throat> See how it works? It's kind of militaristic. So that's what that first QR code tells you, and it should be up there. So. That's one way we're going to get information, is QR codes. And they'll just appear, you know, maybe in a month you might get two or three of these. Now, this is hard to see, but this is a Star Trek map of the known universe. In Star Trek, they color, so you see this one's kind of blue, this one's kind of green, there's some purple up here, a little more blue over here, there's splotches of different colors. This is sort of like ancient cultures when they started a civilization. Didn't they like say, this land is ours? Yeah. What happens if another nearby person, group went into their land? And that's how war started. It's like, well, you crossed our boundaries. This means war. This kind of happens in Star Trek. If any of you ever watched the show, there was a lot of war going on, only in space. Well, our, huh? It doesn't make it better. It makes it actually worse. You know, it's funny. Human nature, even alien nature in this instance, is to be very territorial. This is mine and nobody can have it, which is why it's so sad. Uh, but the blue in this, so in, in this region, is the United Federation of Planets. As the story goes, when humans went out into space and they met other races of 
intelligent beings, they started making alliances. They said, hey, let's work together and help each other out. Some races didn't want to be part of it. Like the Romulans and Klingons were like, oh, we don't like you, we're, we're going to fight you. And other races, like the Vulcans, they were like, we'll be friends. Let's do this. So the Taurus Reach is, we're in this area, United Federation of Planets, and we have to go in this direction. We're headed in this direction. Now, we can't go really far because space is huge, isn't it? Well, not only that, if you're going to travel thousands of light years, even at the speed of light, it's going to take you how long? Thousands of years. Thousands of years. Hate to break it to you, we don't live that long. So that would be kind of hard. Yeah? Okay, so Star Trek is going to be aliens, It's got a lot to do with aliens. Are they green? Some of them. Are they blue? Some of them. Are some of them pink? Ah, yes. In the Star Trek universe, you can probably find uh, people of like all colors. Rainbow of people. Yes. <laughs> now, you might hear or read in part of the story this thing called quadrants. In Star Trek, they divided the universe into four quadrants. The quad means four. So in this quadrant, the beta quadrant, you have Romulans and Klingons. They kind of don't like it. Um, in the Alpha Quadrant, you have um, the Soul System. Soul is the word for our sun. They, are, they call our planet Terra and our sun Soul. So if you hear Terra or Soul, it's us. We also have the Ferengis, the Cardassians. Um, Cardassians? Yeah, not, not those Cardassians. These are the original. I mean, the Star Trek Cardassians. I'm sure the Cardassians were before, before this show. Um, and the Vulcans. They're the people we kind of work with. So again, the Taurus Reach is in the Alpha Quadrant towards here. The people who live there are called Tholians. They don't like strangers in their space, so maybe that's why we're being sent there. It's kind of hard to, to you know, deal with them because they don't trust anybody. So you kind of know already what problems we might be having there. Now this QR code, gives us, oh, by the way, whenever you take a QR code on here, it saves a history of it. So if you forget and you want to go back, you can always check the history. That's a nice thing that QR codes do. So this one is going to give you more information than you've ever wanted about our starship. Check this out. So there's our ship again. It's got all the specifications. And this one is the NCC 72381. It tells you how wide it is. So let's see. It's 82 meters wide, 165 meters long. So our ship is way bigger than the Rodnada's dinosaur. Way bigger. Okay. Just so you know, it's not that small, even though that dinosaur is huge. Um, it tells you about the computer core. It tells you what kind of weapons we have and what kind of shields we have for defense, in case we ever have to defend ourselves or get to a fight. And then it tells you about um, its background. So this is for those of you who are interested, you get some more information. I like to provide information for my curious officers. Oops. So when we get to the top, it's going to take us a while to get to the Taurus Reach. As a matter of fact, um, we may not get there till Tuesday. Well, we won't be here Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So next Tuesday, on our way to Sisbis, that's where the star base. Now, we're going to have to keep that imagination going like we're still there when we're here. But something about Sisbis is how we're going to get to our first mission. Oh, we're working together. Yeah. Well, this QR code, now, this is what a Star Trek star base looks like. Ships dock on these kind of arm things, and then the crew who needs to get off can go here, take elevators called turbo lifts, to the decks where you do stuff. These are mainly engineering decks. They have the, the engine, the warp core. They get all their energy and power from that part of the ship. Yes? 
Yes, there have to be airlocks because when you're going from your ship onto the star base, you don't want to lose all your oxygen and get all the air sucked out of you and yeah, die a very horrible death. Yeah, going into space will kill you if you're not protected with an airlock. Yes? You don't sugarcoat any of that. No, you can't sugarcoat space. Can't movie Star Trek? walk right out of their spaceship and they, yeah, they, they just like stand there and talk? No. Oh yeah, that's really fun. Not, no, they, they, they still needed spacesuits if they were going to go outside their ship. That now Doctor Who tends to walk on the TARDIS, but the TARDIS protects him from space. Because I, you know, we see that in Doctor Who and, and, you know, my family and I watch Doctor Who and we're like, what's he doing out on top of the TARDIS in space? He's protected. Yeah. So, this is information they want us to know who we're working with. This is Admiral Diego Reyes. Notice he's wearing the same command color as me. But look at his insignia. It's fancier than mine. Because he's an admiral. I'm a captain. Um, there's another captain there. This is Captain um, Desai. She is actually a lawyer. She's a junior uh, attorney's group, or I forget what the G stands for. Oh, Judge Advocate General. So she is the Chief Prosecuting Officer of the station. Why is it glowing? I don't know, just the way the light's hitting it. This guy is the commander. He's Commander Tyrese Cooper. He's the XO. XO stands for Executive Officer. They're the second in command, next to the captain. Of course, if there's an admiral, then the admiral's first in command, so he's actually the third. Most ships, yeah, most ships have a, I know, you must be related, have a chief medical officer. you got to have doctors aboard a ship. At CISPIS, we will be taking our chief medical officer, will be our nurse. Now, this race, um, they're, I forgot their name, they're not Andorians, they're something, I forgot. But this is the chief engineer. It's a he. I think it's a he. Yeah, that's a he. Lieutenant Commander DeFoy. Now this is Lieutenant Tasha Jackson. She's a security, chief security officer. Any problems, go to her. She'll handle it. Well, yeah, this is a trip of the imagination. This is the ambassador. His race is Shelly. Um, this is the guy who's responsible for, for getting the Tholians and us to get along. He's a very important character in this plot. Yes. Now this person works for um, uh, Jatanian. She's Anna Sangesto, and I think she's a captain too. I think her rank, I, I forget. But she works with the ambassador. Now this lieutenant commander is a Vulcan. Her name is Prin, and just between you and me, she's a member of a secret group that most people don't know about because they're kind of like the CIA. Okay? And in the Federation, they're called Section 45. Never heard that from me. As your captain, I'm not allowed to divulge this information. Okay, so, um, I know it's early, but since some of you are unlocking the volcano quests, I have to tell you, what, where we're going for our first mission. So, whenever you see a QR code, and some of them are already on here, you snap it. We are. The plot. This has to do with why. So, while we're headed to Starbase 47 in the Taurus Reach, which is going to take us a, a few days, we get this dispatch. From Admiral Reyes, Captain Gonzalez, thank you so much for coming and welcome to the TARDIS Reach. I'd love to say that my star base is at your disposal, but I have urgent need of you and your ship and crew. That means all of us. I've only got two ships at my disposal right now, the Bombay and the Endeavor. Both of them are out on star base business, so we needed another ship, and yours is the only one that was in between missions. Um, and the fact that yours is a science vessel is perfect. I need you to investigate an anomaly on a Class M planet called Pogren. Class M planets are planets like ours, where we can actually go on the planet without breathing apparatus. 
okay? So there's something wrong there, and I've already given you the hint, it's got something to do with volcanic activity.